your Bundle your name into the chat box and you don't record to the cloud or reading in your in your language please also when you do that uh, include all the people that are listening with you because i know sometimes we have staff in the room uh, that's not signed up And then I can start, please. Okay. Right. Okay, everyone. Uh, it is just about 10 o'clock, and uh, we're going to get started here. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, just a few quick uh, rules and terms of instructions for zooming, uh, using the Zoom. See, please type in your name and job title into the chat box, uh, your program name, everyone that is joining you from your tribe, um, and as Luane said, your, your tribal greeting. Some general guidelines, as of course, uh, when you're speaking or when someone else is speaking, uh, uh, give them a chance to um, finish their thoughts um, and also enter any comments in the chat box that you haven't had a chance to um, express in terms of your responses to any questions or anything within the PowerPoint. Um, we will respond to you. Um, Wayne is our monitor with re responding to the chats. Um, and again, everyone's experiences are valued. Please share and allow time for others to share as well. So, yeah. Okay, so we did you want to respond to anyone there? Okay, so we have um, Halito from Debbie, uh, director for the Choctaw Nation Volk Rehab. Um, Halito from Shailene. Shailene, I hope I'm saying your name right. As far as I know, it's only me in the OKC office. Um, forget, forgot to put the program in, Delaware Nation VR program. Jim, uh, hello Jim uh, from Lower Elwa. Angie Kamai, hello, this is Angie from the CITC TVR in Anchorage. Uh, who else do we have here? And that's it so far. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Winona. Um, hello everyone, my name is Winona Reed. I'm one of the TA training specialists. I'm happy to be here to share with you some information about how to create your own AVERS program um, overview. PowerPoint slide. Um, this may seem like a very simple process or activity to conduct and complete. Um, one of the keys is to keep it updated. Um, some areas that you can use this PowerPoint presentation is for one is an open house that you may have for your program. The second is maybe a staff training, some onboarding. Uh, maybe for a applicant or consumer orientation, some outreach that you are doing with other programs, other, other community stakeholders. And lastly, you can use this as reporting to council. Um, one of the keys is to have fun with it and to come up with your own thoughts and your ideas. This is just a template that um, the Avertech staff and cons um, content experts have started for you. But it's just something that I think is really good um, to, to start at any time that your program is in operating. Oh, next slide. Next slide. Um, some of the learning of outcomes for this presentation is one, identify why the approved five-year grant proposal serves as a blueprint for your AVERS program. So basically, this is the who, what, when, and how. So who is the VR project intended for? The what is, what is the need for your um, tribal VR program? The how is, how will you address that need through this program? And when is, when will things get accomplished? So it's basically you're describing your, your grant proposal to someone who may not know any, any information about tribal VR. The second learning objective is to increase the depth of knowledge among your AVERS program staff about the approved five-year grant 
by creating an AVERS program overview PowerPoint presentation. So basically you want to um, align your program staff so everyone is um, hearing the same message and they are also relaying the same message to outside people and to consumers. Again, this is, um, can be used as staff training and as onboarding. And lastly, the last third learning outcome is, is to learn the importance of improving rehabilitation services for tribal members with disabilities to prepare for and maintain gainful employment. So um, part of this, part of this um, tool also is a way for your staff to, and you, to um, understand the program. And when you're, I, I know for myself, when, when I'm presenting and when I'm um, learning something, sometimes the best way is to actually just get out there and start presenting and talking about it. And so this is kind of gets, gets the program going in that way. Okay, so simple things um, for locating the tool. All of, I, all of you should be familiar with our website at avertac.org. Um, what you do is basically go to the website, hover over the, hover over the resources tab until you see a drop down menu. In that drop down menu, you want to drop down to the products and tools and click on that. Um, once you click on that, a window should open and allow, it should allow you to scroll down um, within that window until you find the Create Your Own AVERS Program Overview Tool. Um, and within each tool, there's red lettering that gives you the opportunity to download the tool itself. So you click on that and you download it there. So you can see we have just a sample of the website itself here on the screen. Um, you see the Home tab, About tab, Modules tab, toolkits and the resources that's the tab you want to click on you follow these directions and you should be able to find the um, creating your own program overview Let me. Yep. okay so sections of the tool if you open up the tool some of you might be doing so now um, it might be helpful for you to just go ahead and open that up um, and open it as a separate window on your computer because um, you'll see that it's a, it's a lengthy document, all in PowerPoint, and it has three sections to it. Um, and the first sections are slides 1 through 21, and they are red in color, just like the red you see here on the screen. And they basically serve as the introduction and guidelines to use the tool. Uh, we didn't display them here in this webinar just for the sake of condensing the presentation to get to the, the main topic of how you use this tool. Um, and then section two are slides 22 through 39. And uh, this is the main component of, of the PowerPoint tool um, with which you can use it for the purposes that Winona just explained. Uh, and most of it, it will be led by the Davers director and manager for them to enter information into each of the slides 22 through 39. Um, and the information is pretty much given to you from your approved five-year grant. Uh, as you fill that in, one of the purposes of, of the tool is to help you become more familiar, if you're not already, um, with areas of your grant that, um, you know, sometimes that we lose sight of um, or that we need to be reminded of or actually using the tool to share with other staff so you can orientate them to that. Then lastly, section slide, section three, are the last four slides in the tool. Um, and they change from red to blue, and they serve as guidelines for your next steps. Summarize, reflect, and develop your plans to meet these grant obligations. Um, and so when you think about this tool, it really helps you outline a process um, when you talk about program management. Um, and and when, we, when we think about it from a broader perspective, we're really putting the directors and managers in the position of facilitating um, dynamics within your work setting for your staff to, to enter into a collaborative partnership with you as a director and determining in which ways you all can work together um, as it's informed by your five-year grant. And as you know, at every Avers programs, I think those of you that were with us in Scottsdale, uh, 
last week. And then those of you that were, we saw in KNAR, there's always a, a constant conversation with our programs about, um, you know, the, the constant turnover um, within our program and the lack of, um, or the challenges with identifying qualified individuals. And so, um, you know, as we mentioned earlier, the, the grant is really a blueprint for those new people coming in uh, and for those that are senior staff um, to all develop consensus in working together toward a common goal. Uh, and, and we rely on the five-year grant that way. And so we encourage a lot of programs to, to utilize this tool in that manner and understand that more than just a tool, it's also a process that you're implementing. Summary of section one, Go ahead. introduction and guidelines. Um, so as I said again, it's a blueprint. Um, another area that it uh, really helps you identify is, is roles and responsibilities. Um, as, as we all know, there are multiple staff within a program um, and using the grant to help you outline uh, who is responsible for what, how we're going to do that, and what are the outcomes um, if we're carrying out these responsibilities in, in the appropriate way. Uh, this is things that, these are things that your approved grant will help you define. Also, developing a program overview helps you provide um, a process, as I just explained, to meet your goals and objectives. Um, and then also, as we go through, you'll see some of the questions that we um, uh, present to you within the template itself help you with identifying some of the current needs that you have challenges and barriers uh, with providing services we know that that is a constant fluctuation you know based on your environmental um, needs your your community um, there's always things changing in that that impact how your Avers program runs and lastly uh, you know we encourage you to use this as a st strategic planning tool um, for organiza is organizational management for your AVERS program. Okay, okay so the um, AVERTAC has put together kind of this framework of a PowerPoint presentation. It is up to you to update it and add your little twist to it. Um, you can add pictures, you can add quotes, you can add videos, and you can change the background. I do know, um, I remember a few years ago, a, pro a travel VR program even created a video that helped with this. And so it's, it's up to you and how you, wanna, how you wanna do this. This is just one way of, of relaying that information. So on this first page, you would, um, for the program overviews, you would insert your program name into this area. You can add your own program logo at the bottom and your own information. And don't forget, you need to add in um, the grant number and that disclaimer, because that's a requirement of a federal grant program. So on the slide, you will also include the, um, the disclaimer, similar to what we had on our first slide. Next. So on this page, what is your AVERS program about? So, um, you can add in a sentence of what is one thing you are most proud of with working with Avers program. Note when completing your PowerPoint, always type your content. Oh, so just always note that these are just kind of like um, something to lead you into what you want to put into a slide. So always delete this stuff. Uh, we're just giving you suggestions of what, how you can start this. So as a staff member of your program, what is one thing you would like to make an impact in? In the community that you serve. Another thing is you can also um, share from consumer satisfaction surveys a comment that someone has about your program or maybe you heard of uh, an experience that a consumer had and you can kind of add in a quote of what their experience was um, receiving services from your program and of course you would delete any sort of identifiers or anything it's just kind of a, a general statement of wow, so-and-so was great, um, he or she led me into the job that I have right now and without this Tribal VR program, I wouldn't be where I was, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so always put in something positive in the beginning because uh, I think it, for someone who may not be familiar with a program, they kind of will remember that story. Mm -hmm. 
And then you would add in if you have a mission statement. Your mission statement is usually a, a formal summary of the aims and values of your program, or maybe it's the department that you work in. So if you have a department that's above you and they have a mission for the overall umbrella of, of all these programs. So you can mm -hmm. enter that in here. Mm -hmm. um, so what, always remember the person receiving the information. So what does an outsider need to know if they have no prior knowledge of tribal VR, state VR, your program, the services, um, the impact of someone with a disability um, being gainfully employed. So you can add that information and the history of the program. So provide information about the total length the, of time your, tro your program has been funded for the AVERS program. And you can also add in their current AVERS grant funding cycle, federal and non-federal. So you can say, you know, we're in our first five years of funding. Um, this is kind of the background of where we are, um, previously the um, services were provided by state VR and um, potentially there's you know a thousand people that could be served and the state was only serving X number of people. And that's why the tribe took the initiative to write the grant and to get funded. So you can write things like that. So give some sort of program history and background of why this program was needed. Again, back to our learning objectives of who, what, why, when, and how. Again, um, some background is you can include what is the tribal enrollment numbers and what percentage of those are tribal members with disabilities. And I think someone who has um, maybe um, background in policy changes or they're on tribal council, or maybe some health people, they like to see that kind of stuff. It, may, it really resonates with them. It makes them think about why your program is needed and how important it is or how, how you can collaborate with the program. Then you would put in there, what is your program designated service area? You can add the map. You can add in you know, some, some pictures in there. of what, what is your service area so that everyone, your staff and um, outsiders understand where, where you're serving. And then additionally, add any pertinent information that demonstrates the magnitude of need for services for tribal members with disabilities who reside on or near the reservation. Again, why your program is needed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, so um, going from that, I, you know, one of the things that I, we constantly think about as we're filling us in this information as directors, um, I would assume that we think about, well, how, what do my staff have to say about this? What do my VR counselors have to say? Um, and, and so, you know, one of the things that I wanna encourage um, you all that are chiming in today is to think about the diversity of, of your program staff. Um, and as you're filling this in as directors and managers, think about that next step of sharing this with your staff and gathering their input. You know, how do you want to facilitate that discussion? What kind of environment do you need to create so that they're contributing to this document? Um, this first step that we're, we're the section two with the blue um, slides that we're sharing with you, a lot of it is, it can be taken from your grant, but then again, as Winona said, you're updating it. It's, it's a working document, and you're looking at the current um, pulse of your program in terms of what's currently occurring. And so this information changes over time, but as a director, you, you really want to think about how do you facilitate this conversation so that, you know, everyone's voices are included in, in contributing to this document? And so, you know, that leads us to this idea of strengths and assets um, of, of your program, um, not just, you know, with your personnel, but in terms of your environment with your tribe. You know, are there employers available within the service area that provide these opportunities for potential consumers? Um, are there, you know, any um, uh, ways that you provide culturally appropriate services to consumers that you want to maintain across your staff? Um, you know, for example, as we put here, you know, how is your community and oral history or traditions represented through your processes? 
you know, how do you talk about, you know, the, the, the environment and landmarks within your community? Um, and, and sometimes, you know, it's as simple as how do you provide customer service? You know, as, as we all come from our own um, native communities, we know that taking care of family is a very big common value that we share. You know, when, when we have visitors coming in, family coming in, we offer them a, a cup of water or food or what have you, you know. How do those cultural values transfer into your program? Um, so thinking about those kind of things as um, strengths and assets of your program. Other things you want to think about are your external partners. You know, one being the VR agency. What is your relationship with like with them? What are some of those things you can recognize that are strengths? Um, resources that offer insight uh, for services as like culturally appropriate service, such as subsistence living. Um, and then any educational institutional assets, you know, or your local high schools. Um, do you have a tribal college available? Um, and do you have a relationship with them? You know, I, I, I think, you know, we, as, as being here in Avertac, we know that working in a VR program is, you do all of the above, you know, that drop down menu that says, what do you do? You can't just select one thing but you do pretty much everything. And, and so sometimes there's a lot of priorities that you have to set in terms of what do you wanna address first? Do you have enough staff? What are their strengths um, in, in their ability to develop these partnerships? So as you're going through this, these stages, think about that as you're trying to answer these um, questions or these um, talking points. Um, and then, of course, we get to the challenges and barriers. Less challenges and barriers seen as impediments to employment for tribal members with disability. Um, we know um, uh, probably a majority of our, our communities have a high unemployment rate. Um, we know that there's a lack of job opportunities um, within our tribal um, communities. We know that sometimes there is a lack of higher education opportunities for individuals living on fixed incomes. It's, it's very important, um, I think, especially for this section, challenges and barriers, that you do as, as, as much as you can to identify how that impacts, you know, things such as IPE development. You know, when you're writing an, an IPE, you want to be sure that you're providing an opportunity that's achievable. You know, you want to be sure that a consumer is informed about these community um, barriers that exist um, and understanding that if if we do have an unemployment high unemployment rate in our community if we do have a high um, uh, or limitation of employment opportunities that that consumers choice about a job may require them to say transition into another an urban community for example that's how this section informs the practice of what you do as, as a program. And I think that's where, as a director, um, being aware and cognizant that as you're training your staff, these things do in fact play a role um, with <clears throat> the, immediate, um, the, the immediate practices of your VR staff and your program staff. Can I just say something? Yes. Else? So this is also an area, it can, um, can be challenges and barriers, but it can also be the strengths and um, the strengths and assets of a, of a tribe. So right here we have tribal unemployment rate, but we can also put in the strengths if the unemployment rate is actually really low because of some um, industry that has come in or the, the, a new casino has been built or, um, you know, some other sort of business and infrastructure coming in there. So we can actually say that it's a strength for the tribe. And then also um, lack of higher education. Yes, in most areas it is a challenge and barrier, but it can also be a strength and asset if, if you have a tribal college that is there. I know I think Cherokee is trying to start a trade school on their reservation, um, Cherokee of North Carolina. So there are, there are, um, opportunities that a lot of this stuff can actually go into the strengths and weaknesses as well okay mm -hmm. and also one last thing is to update as you're as you're reading stuff or you see things in the newspaper or if the tribe has come out with some statistics is 
that's part of the always updating. Add that information in here so that you always have the most updated information when you're relaying that information out, okay? Okay. Uh, so other examples to consider um, limitations, so as we talked about, no jobs, lack of economic development. Um, we know transportation is a big one. Um, uh, this is also a big one, the lack of awareness um, by the community about people with disability. Um, and I think that's why in some of your grants you cover outreach and orientation. Um, and then also this, the, the lack of coordinated transition services um, with local high schools. Um, state relationships, um, th does discrimination exist in state employment opportunities? Um, communica communication, education of AVERS at the program, tribal government, community, and state levels. Um, and then, of course, internally, you know, looking at our AVERS program, are we fully staffed? Um, do we have enough office space available to staff or, or to house our people? Um, so just a quick, que a quick question to all of you out there before we move forward. You know, we, we reviewed the assets and strengths of your program, and then we also re reviewed your challenges, the challenges and barriers. I'd like to ask each of you to think about those two concepts, and in the chat box, if you will, um, share what you're comfortable with sharing, that one thing that you're proud of um, that you see as a strength in your program. Um, and then one thing that you know your program is dealing with in terms of challenges and barriers. Um, it would be great to see uh, what, what you're all also dealing with in your own communities. So I'm going to give you a quick uh, few seconds to enter that into the chat box. And we will sit here and just uh, read it off as you enter. We will sit here and stare at you uncomfortably. Wayne will do that. <laughs> we see Jim and Darcy, Darcy, Angie, Jacqueline, Christopher, Joanna, Marla, Debbie, um, another Marla. Oh, we have two Marla Spears. How does that happen? And then Giselle and Shailene. So if you can please enter your comments, we'd sure appreciate it. We don't see any coming in. Don't be shy. Remember, we're a community. Wayne says he was proud of the hope he, they generated for the youth. Thank you, Wayne. So the, the question was uh, for us to enter in items that we're proud of in our programs and then, and then at least one item that we found as a, a barrier to our program. Yes. I think for, Angie uh, stated that, I think for CITC, we serve a lot of people in our program because Anchorage is the biggest village, in quotations, in Alaska. And because the Alaska Native Medical Center is here where Natives from around the state receive services. Thank you, Angie. So just think about, um, uh, think about this tool and how you would, let's say you have your, your few seconds elevator speech and you run into an important strong council person or an important person in your community and um, you're like, hey, um, hey, uh, Christopher, I heard about what you're doing out there. What, what strengths what are the strengths of your program? How are you impacting the tribal um, employment outcomes? Uh, what are your, some of your challenges? What would you say, Christopher? Well, he responded. You know? um, I'm, I'm proud that our team. <laughs> I'm proud that our team has been intact in spite of me having to learn so much uh, and training some of them incorrectly when I was new. 
they've stuck with it in spite of me. I'm proud that we have a diverse group, one who, one who is a graduate of our state VR system, one who has a son in the state VR. I'm proud that we made a huge leap this year in terms of numbers of people served in the terms of successful closures. Uh, Shalene stated, I am proud of our program because we get to serve the rural area in Anadarko where Anadarko area where the jobs are more scarce and the urban area of Oklahoma City where there are more job opportunities. Um, Adriana, or this is Adriana, one of the strengths for us is that we can provide culturally relevant services and spiritual healing. Uh, Christopher said it takes a while to type all of this. <laughs> Only if you write a book, Christopher. <laughs> I am proud of how our community gives our people hope in overcoming barriers with employment as well as general life challenges. Um, that's from Darcy. Jim Allen stated, we are glad to meet or exceed our program goals. A barrier could be that there are five tribes in this county, but our service area only covers the traditional areas of one tribe. Mm. Mm. So a lot of good stuff coming in. Yes, a lot of good stuff. Thank you everyone for sharing. And, um, you know, Jim, I, I think that resonates across all tribal communities, you know, in the sense that there are many other tribes um, within our states and we don't have the opportunity to serve them um, more broadly. Um, and, and I think that drives home the point about why uh, Abertech is here to help facilitate ways to make your services more efficient and give you tools to use. Um, while at the same time, we're advocating on behalf of our community members who have the disabilities and need the service. Um, um, Amanda Race just chimed in. We are proud to serve uh, Tanana Chief Service Area Villages because of the cultural and traditional values used to assist people achieve their goals. Travel in bad weather October to March is a barrier. We talk a lot on the phone. Yeah. Angie, yeah, and then Angie added, I personally feel that the legalization of marijuana from the state has caused a disrupt has caused a disruption with rehabilitation. Because TVR is federally funded, it considers marijuana a drug. Both state DVR and TVR consider it a drug. We have individuals who use it based on their medical record. But when we explain our process, we will recommend we, we, will we will recommend the drug assessment. We state that any disability from their medical record can determine eligibility. However, it is using, if it is using, then where is the rehabilitative effort? Right. Um, that's, that's a really good point. So those last two, the weather barrier, I think all, all, of, our tri all of our programs have experienced some impact from weather. Mm -hmm. um, today, as we talk, uh, the fire outside of Flagstaff, so, you know, the ABRTAC uh, program is also on standby for evacuation. Um, there's been several tribes with excessive rains and snow and flooding. So right. it's, it's a real deal. And then this marijuana issue, that's always uh, interesting when we start tearing it apart and looking at it. How does it impact our programs and what's the, what's the uh, end result going to be? Um, I know several tribes are, are pushing their sovereign right to make, govern their own. Um, so it's going to be interesting how that, how that shakes out. Right. Well, we, have, uh, we want to get to Christopher's and Debbie's last comment, and then we'll move forward with the, the, the um, presentation. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll also give you a little bit more time to express and share where you're coming from. Um, Christopher states, um, I'm proud of Washington State's Tribal VR programs partnering on so many big issues. I'm proud that Colville Tribe VR and Coeur d'Alene Tribe VR both agree to let me write our grant to expand partially into their areas. We all agree that any one of us could lose our funding and will depend on those left to serve our people. Um, and then Debbie writes, I'm proud of our staff and how dedicated they have been to our program and it's consumers. We have consumers returning to our program, wanting to be hired as counselors and give back. So I feel we are making an impact. Thank you, right on Debbie. Like um, and Chris, same thing with you. I think, um, you know, it's great to hear that collaboration is happening and communication and collaboration is happening between tribes 
um, with the understanding that there is, there is always that potential, you know, that um, we don't get refunded and what is the backup. Um, and so that communication is so important. Um, and again, drives home the point that, you know, a product like this, you know, creating your own overs program overview highlights those areas in terms of your strengths and your barriers so that everyone is receiving the same information and then can work from that as a foundation. Going back to our PowerPoint, um, the next uh, segment that we recommend you include in your program overview is your staffing. Um, you know, each of our grants have, you know, designated staff people involved with a certain amount of numbers. Um, and so we created a list of things that we find in grants um, for positions that are funded. Doesn't mean that it, this fits your program, um, but it is really, so, I think, especially with um, your tribal council, your, your tribal departments, that you exemplify um, those people employed by your program and then the amount of um, percentage of time they're giving to the program along in lines with the project director, the counselors, any VR specialists you have, any office specialists, employment outreach techs, um, list any other positions that um, are supported by your federal and non-federal funds. There are some tribes who have um, the opportunity to, to contribute extra money of, on top of the grant to fund a position like a transition specialist. Some of you write that into your grant as, as a need area um, or a job developer. So there's, you know, very different ways that you write this up, but including the number of staffing that you have and how much is supported by federal and non-federal helps you give it, uh, helps you give you, helps give you a framework of who's doing the work of fulfilling the grant goals and objectives. Um, just to piggyback on to this is to, also include a or, an organizational chart um, where your program is within the tribal structure. That's very helpful for people to understand where you are. I know some people are standalone projects and some are under Department of Ed and some are under social services and some are right under the president or the chairman of the tribe. So um, getting, you know, having an org chart is really helpful for an outsider to understand where you are. You can even expand on that um, above is where the funding is actually coming from, you know, Department of Ed, to OSHERS, to RSA, to the tribe. Right. Um, and, and just a quick note to everyone out there, you know, just because we moved on, if you still um, are developing your thoughts and want to share, please contribute to the chat box um, and, and we'll recognize that as we move on. Oh, just real quick question. Yes. I was just thinking about this because I know one program is doing this or are having challenges with this is that again this is this is yours to use so I know of one program that is having problems with hiring within the tribal structure and we talked about how what does a typical tribal VR program look like they have a director they have a VR counselor they have a job coach and they may have a admin assistant and they're having a difficult time with um, the tribal um, colleges having a difficult time with the the titles of the of the VR counselor so they can only hire like a case manager so it's, it kind of helps to have maybe sometime a comparison of what is a typical tribal VR program staffing look like and maybe what yours looks like in in if that's something that you want to um, drive point drive the the point across with maybe a tribal council mm -hmm. okay thank you Anona. Mm -hmm. um, so the next slide is just uh, actually two slides should be uh, you want to provide the description of your goal it could look like this um, but just make it clear and succinct what your first goal of your grant is um, some others include you know their um, projections for consumer served or employment outcomes um, over a five-year total um, and what we encourage you to do is you know to sync what your your goal with your evaluation outcome in terms of how do you describe how are you proposing that you're going to evaluate whether or not you've achieved your goals and objectives um, and so oftentimes in our review of grants um, as we're doing technical assistance um, we find that there are some strengths and weaknesses um, in terms of how that's written up. Sometimes we have a goal, an objective that is written, but we don't have an evaluation component to that. 
Um, and, and it's really eye-opening, especially for a director as you're reviewing your grant, because um, you know, sometimes we're, we're just, uh, we may have started and we didn't write the grant. Um, we can evaluate whether or not we have appropriate ways of, of measuring um, whether or not we're making progress. Um, but for the purpose of this PowerPoint, um, it would be very helpful for all, for all staff to know what those goals are. And in this case, you know, what are the goals for each fiscal year for each consumer served and then your employment outcomes for each year. Um, and so at the note at the bottom of the screen says you can duplicate this um, without the table because, you know, we have other goals or objectives. Um, then and just add the slides as um, you um, complete entering in the number of goals and objectives that you have for your grant. Um, the, the other section is coordinated services. Um, so, you know, as a, if I were a new staff coming into a program, say a VR specialist, learning about, you know, who we work with um, and how we work with them and who's responsible for doing that, this is one area that I would like to know about. You know, what are those comparable services? Because sometimes that's what they are. Um, benefits that are available through other providers. Um, do we work with the state? Is there a memorandum of understanding um, with the state? And what is the outline in that? As a VR counselor, I would want to know how I could utilize and be efficient with how I'm writing an IPE for a consumer. Um, so laying out you know, a, a roadmap for that person on this slide in terms of who are your coordinated service partners? You know, does it include high schools, higher education, disability resource centers, um, et cetera? Um, yeah. Okay, and then uh, consumer involvement. So, as, as we all know, you know, consumer involvement, we, they're involved in various aspects of our five-year grant. Um, and so, in, in this case, you know, we talk about, um, you know, how, are, how is the program proposing to address consumer involvement? and provide that explanation of why, they, why the Avers program is meeting or not meeting this activity. Um, so considerations might include, like some, some programs have, have advisory council that's not mandatory, but some programs write in that we're gonna have an advisory council. Um, and question is that, are we currently doing that? Are there any improvements that we wanna, wanna make? Um, you know, how are we doing in terms of practice with joint development of an IPE? Um, are they fully informed consumers as we're developing that, that IPE? Um, and then, you know, a big thing that we get a lot of here now is, you know, we have programs asking us to review their policies and procedures. Um, and uh, oftentimes we will recommend that, you know, the policies and procedures should be reviewed um, by someone, by a, com a committee such as an advisory committee that would consist of um, either current or former consumers that can help you develop a, a succinct process um, that really engages your consumer. Um, and then also a big one that we all um, are required to report on is your pre and post consumer satisfaction surveys. You know, how do you use that data? You know, what are you utilizing from comments that are in these surveys to help inform what you're doing as a program? So as a VR counselor, you know, the way I started out this, this slide is, you know, these are things I think would be important for me to know to inform how to do my job well, you know, inform my roles and responsibilities. So questions and conversation. So you can see we went through those multiple aspects and they're the basic um, major components of your five-year grant. You should be able to use this template and then look at your grant at the same time and basically transfer information over and update it as a director manager um, as the first step. Um, and in, within that first step, uh, you're, you're confirming that all that documentation is, is true and correct. Um, but then the next step that we have you do is, um, you know, questions and conversation. You've completed the review. Now you want to take this to your staff and you want to present them and give them an orientation. Um, as, as you recall, the first 
I'm going to go back to the first uh, slide here. Can I ask a quick question real quick? So how many of you that are online have a have something like this already, a project overview? I just was curious to know. And how often do you update it? And who do you use it mostly with? Anyone? So if you can answer in the chat box, how many of you currently have a, a product like this or a tool that you use? Um, how do you use it? And who do you use it with? It's a safe place, so yes or no. <laughs> While we wait, I'm going to read uh, Giselle's uh, response to the previous question. Another one is the uh, Omaha tribe now is a team of local tribal members who know our community needs, barriers, and they have a trusting relationship with many people and know how to build with consumers. Great. So that's a great, great positive uh, strength. Jim came on and said, not us. Uh, Joanna says, Nez Perce don't have, does not have one. Um, Angie says we have a weekly PowerPoint orientation for new consumers. Amanda is saying I have an old one that needs updating, used used at a Canar in South Carolina, and an ODEP in D.C. We have printed the slides out and placed on a board at convention at convention at our info table. It was used last in 2019. Great. And Chris says, we do, we update it when we're going to use it. Mostly it's for public presentations. Great. Good. Um, so, so going back to that, the last slide that I showed you about the questions, um, it, it takes us back to this very first slide that we had at the beginning of this presentation is, you know, what are the things that you're most proud of? And as a staff member, what is one thing you would like to make an impact on in the community you serve? And so this is where you can take it back to as you're starting that presentation as a director to show what you've pulled out at the grant to orientate your staff with. Um, and, and we've learned that one of the most important things to facilitate conversation within your, within your group dynamics is to build that trust. You know? And to build trust, the most important thing you can do is, is acknowledgement. You know, acknowledge your individual members, you know, and thus the questions here is, you know, relate what are what is their relationship with the program itself and what is their relationship with the community. Um, and, and, and this actually will take some time for you to get through and, and I would encourage you all as as program staff to give one another um, an appropriate amount of time uninterrupted time. Um, that you're scheduling to do this this next section of sharing and getting feedback from your staff um, and as you're going through this for each slide update the information you know so that people can see that we're they're contributing to the overall presentation um, does anyone have any suggestions or um, examples of good practices to build trust and good relationships with your staff so we can engage in this kind of kind, type of um, activity what have you done out there as program directors or what have your directors done with you to um, help build a trusting environment Angie says, we try to have weekly staff meetings on Friday afternoon, celebrate birthdays and accomplishments. All right. Food. Sounds like food to me. Mm -hmm. Food always does it. In our Christopher stated, in our team meetings, we start with everyone telling something they are grateful for. Great. Thank you, Christopher.
in my program, we used to uh, uh, have meals together. Uh, we, you know, pick a breakfast or maybe a lunch together um, and just chat. And we'd cook it there at the office so everybody would contribute and then, and then benefit from it. Oh. Know, Go ahead. Oh, I know of one program when they get a successful closure and they'll, they hang just a, it's just a star. They just hang it on ah. by their desk. And so then they just start adding to the stars in the area. That is nice. I know a program that has a, a, a tree painted on their, their wall. And when they have successful employment, they, they, they take and add the names to the branches as leaves. Oh, wow. that's nice. Debbie stated we have, we have staff, we staff weekly and we eat together once a week to catch up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Deb Debbie. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to take us back to that last slide we were on um, and thank you for your, your answers there. Angie stated that we have Skype and send funny, silly stuff for encouragement and keeping humor. Mm -hmm. Yes, humor is so important, very important. Um, and I think that's so important too, um, because you know we, we work within our own tribal communities and we know our communities are small. And so um, a very important aspect of this is that, uh, or actually a learning outcome is that, you know, just acknowledging that we do come from these communities and we're all, contributing to the same goal of helping our consumers find employment. And there are many outside factors can, that can interfere with that. And so strengthening the core of your program to work together and to address these challenges and barriers together uh, make, you, make you stronger to move forward. And, and that's a really big piece, I think, of, of, group, of good team dynamics. Um, we have a couple more on other comments. Yeah. So Giselle stated my staff is fairly new. However, again, we all know our communities uh, well, as well as our tribal membership. We care and are empathetic. We have an open dialogue daily in the mornings to discuss any questions or concerns. We're eager to learn and want to help our people succeed. Great. Thank you. Uh, Jim added in my colleague, Oh, that was, sorry, that was Adriana, not Giselle. Um, sorry about that. My colleague, Jim Allen stated, uh, my colleague used to be my client. When I am near her office, I always stop by to chat about whatever and vice versa. Great. I think um, Daryl said it best when we were talking, he would talk about trust. And I know that for a few of the programs that I work with, that the best way for them to build trust and to build a um um, you know, what he was talking about in this section is having those casings, sharing with each other, how did they go about certain things? How did, what were their lessons learned? What were the best practices? Because you can actually go to the next slide. So when you're moving forward, when you're, you're, you're building that trust amongst your staff to share and to think about how they're improving this, is to always keep in mind you're, you're, you're celebrating your successes, like hanging up those stars. And, and I know that for my prior job, we celebrated grant proposals being funded all the time. It was something that um, we would always, you know, do something about either with the PI or just amongst ourselves as a team. You know, talking about those best practices, what, how, how, how are they working with um, a certain business or how are they working with a certain office? Um, so how are they, you know, working with the tribal college and informing and reinforcing these practices, you know, developing strategies to make these improvements and developing a work plan for each activity assigned with clear tasks and persons responsible deadlines, current status of progress made on activity. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to this? Um, yeah, so, so keep in mind that moving forward is, um, an activity that it's happening after you've shared and gathered the input from your staff to update the, the previous slides that we shared with you. The next steps are of moving forward is now what are we gonna do with the information, kind of what uh, Winona said earlier. 
what do we do with this and how do we go forth with doing it? And so a lot of this conversation and moving the moving forward section is, is really your strategic planning. You know, what are you going to do now that we are working from the same information, same knowledge about our program? We've had an opportunity to share where we come from in terms of what we're most proud of, what we want to do to improve and contribute to our community. That next step naturally will be, what do we do next? You know, and that's where these questions come in or these statements. You know, how do we strategize that and what, what's the work plan? And I think sometimes... Um, you know, I, I do this all the time. We have these really great ideas, you know, these wonderful ideas of, well, we can do this, we can do that, you know, and then everyone else starts contributing to, it. yes, let's do that, you know, and, but then we don't set up a work plan, you know, we don't set a, a hard task priority list, you know, in terms of who's going to do what, when is it going to be completed by, and that's one, one part of moving forward is, as we're talking about these ideas, let's make a plan to actually carry it out, you know, and, and that's part of moving forward. Um, I, I don't know if some of you on the line with us can, can agree to that, agree with that, or have experiences of, you know, where we've had great ideas, but uh, maybe we, we didn't have as much follow through as we had wanted. And that's okay. And I think that's part of the team development, team process of building um, that, that consistency among your staff to say we, we do need to develop these skills where we are responsible for what we need to do as we move forward. Um, some ex activities you may develop and complete include, um, you know, something simple as completing consumer case file reviews um, on a regular basis. You know, it could be quarterly, it could be you know, having your staff do it individually, pull our consumer case file review from the Abertac website. If you don't know how to use that, give us a call and, and you know, we'll, we'll help orientate you on how to use the tool itself. Um, if you're not already using technical assistance and you feel that you need technical assistance, this is one tool that we rely on heavily um, to, to develop some baseline data for us. Um, and then review and map out your current AVERS process. That's a really large activity that we've learned with um, technical assistance is not everyone understands the VR process the same. Um, in some programs that have been around for, for a while, you've developed a process that works very well. All your counselors know that process. They all do it the same way. And each person is assigned to a specific stage in that process. Some programs are still working and struggling with identifying that VR process and assigning roles and responsibilities of staff. And so we're all different places, but it really is a good idea to review that process with your staff um, so that you can identify these areas that impact case management, you know, and identify activities. Uh, Bjord, at the KNAR presentation with Suzanne and Daryl, that was kind of a, a great example of Everyone kind of does it their own way. It, it all leads to an employment outcome, but the process right. was even different within um, state VR and state VR from the same state even interpret things differently. And mm -hmm. so it was a really good exercise that we did at, um, that they did at KNAR because it, it was clear everyone um, explained it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I like that exercise. Yes. Uh, hopefully, I think some of you may have participated in that. Um, other th activities you could do are review your current knowledge and skills of your staff um, and then identify professional development plans. You know, what are areas that you see that they need improvement in and how can you find those resources to support them in that process? Um, and then the other thing, clarifying roles and responsibilities of each AVERS program staff. You know, sometimes we overlap. We do the job of... Um, you know, of other um, employees within the program. Um, and, and it's not specifically assigned and staff are asking each other, should I do that or do you do that? So we wanna clarify those roles and responsibilities um, so that, you know, we're working more efficiently. Um, so before, before we uh, jump into the last slide, I wanted to ask um, those of you logging in with us today, are there 
um, what are your thoughts and ideas with moving forward? And I, I want to take you off mute so you can all share um, and we can talk amongst one another um, and, and then talk about what is moving forward for you? What does that look for? Uh, what does that look like in your program? So uh, let me see if I can figure out how to take you off mute. At this point, they need to do it individually. Oh, can you all take yourself off mute? Marla, I see Marla did. Angie did. Angie did. And Giselle. Giselle. Okay. Great, so you're all finding the, the mute button. It's down at, it should be down at the bottom of your screen. You just take yourself off mute. Um, if we can have a conversation, um, what, what, what is moving forward for you? How do you use this information for your program? Hello, this is Jackie from the Seneca Nation in New York. Can everybody hear me? Yes, hi Jackie. Hi. Um, I was just kind of like, <clears throat> we need to get some technical assistance out here um, in Irving, New York, because uh, let's see, I've got four years in with um, the VR program. I have a director that has less than a year. I have a program manager that has just made her year. VR um, counselor for the other, other territory. So, um, it just doesn't seem like we've ever been on the same page in the four years that I've been with the program. And I'm kind of wondering whether or not is there a way that there's some kind of technical support where they can come in. I mean, we have a good structure. We have a foundation, but we just don't have a direction. And I feel like we need to be broken down to where we be built back up to be a successful um, program. Like, Right now, we're just like pulling at straws, and I, you know, was never really formally trained either for the position. So I'm kind of just looking for some kind of ideas that I can help my my program manager right now. She's out on medical, and that's Sharon Patterson. But my director is Tony Pierce, and I just kind of need to know whether or not there was um, some suggestions about where we should go because I feel like we really need we really struggle with the with the whole. Um, direction and consistency part of it doesn't say nothing is the same. Everybody who's been in the program for the past four years has done things their way and it's not always the right way, I guess. Right. So any ideas would be very helpful. All right. Well Jackie, thank you for your um your openness and willingness to share on, on behalf of your program and your position there. I, I'd like to ask other um, people online to respond before we do, um, because obviously I think technical assistance is um, available, but we also have a wealth of knowledge by those who have been in providing in the service of um, Avers for, for a while now and might have some great suggestions on steps we could take with moving forward. So could I please ask um, the rest of the panel out there to respond to? Hi, this is Angie with um, Cook Inlet Tribal Council in Anchorage. And I think um, one, uh, there's many ways that we uh, work cohesively as we can, despite, you know, any abrupt um, personnel changes is just um, focusing on what, you know, our goals and objectives are, you know, it could be like meeting with my supervisor and looking at the grant and then uh, I having staff meetings and um, you know, kind of like disseminating information of what, what it is um, we are going to do. And um, me being new is um, having, it's helpful to have um, weekly meetings or bi-weekly meetings with my supervisor. And then also, of course, relying on other Alaska program managers throughout the state mm -hmm. on ideas and um, even like job coaching. I was able to job coach with um, 
Kodiak Area Native Association TVR and then Clinkett and Haida TVR. So that was some valuable insight there. Um, and of course, I, I've been busy with school and I'm grateful to be back, you know, doing um, these kinds of trainings. Um, but in a nutshell, you know, just um, working, um, coming in every day and okay, we have an annual goal of so many um, successful closures to meet, where are we now? And what can we do? And then, you know, just adapting um, different plans to help um, our consumers that are more realistic, like even implementing like the, um, the subsistence plan. And we do have folks who harvest fish or berries or greens, even in the big city. So that's uh, just another way to keep moving forward. Thank you, Angie. I appreciate we appreciate that. Um, anyone out there uh, can, can contribute uh, to responding to Jacqueline's comment about how, how do we move forward? You know, when we're in a place where um, we're feeling that there's no cohesion between the team, um, and, and and what are some activities that we can engage with that would help develop that cohesion? Is Christopher still on the line? Looks like I'm, I'm, I was going to call Christopher out because he had he's having a good experience. Um, we also have Amanda Race. Uh, Amanda, I know you have some experience. I don't know if you'd be willing to share some insight. Mm -hmm. And we also have Debbie, um, who's been around for a while. So it'd be great to hear from the both of you. Hi. Hi. It's Amanda. Um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm working on the grant too. Uh, it's due Monday. Oh my goodness. I don't know how many other people are on here doing double uh, multitasking. So um, looking at the slide. Um, so I started 11 years ago. Philip Albert Jr., uh, VR counselor, he's been with uh, Tana, he's been with the VR program and Tanana Chiefs for about 23 years. Mm -hmm. I've been with the company for 20 years and I was in close relation. I was also um, uh, my the VR program's match because we had a state um, disability grant up until this last year. Um, so I did work closely and I was supervised. We were all supervised by the same person. Uh, Jackie Bisbee and so now I'm the director for 11 years and some months um, but we we meet weekly or bi-weekly you know every other week at least and go over case files um, I make a point every Wednesday we have an all staff meeting with all of the other programs within client development uh, there's about 40 staff uh, 20 programs maybe 15 something like that elder nutrition um, GA TANF uh, education head start ILP so we make a point to thank our staff on a weekly basis and um, it, it comes from the top down um, the president meets weekly with his senior management sometimes I'm acting for my supervisor so I'm at that meeting um, he expresses weekly to always thank your staff um, for all the good things they do. We've recently put up an achievement board in our uh, wing on the west wing and it's for the entire floor mm -hmm. and we put down our achievements. Um, you know we closed three cases this week or, or this month in successful employment outcomes. Uh, you know, someone applies for a grant and gets a grant. Uh, someone gets an award for something. Um, it's someone's birthday. I mean, it could be anything. And, and we, we document all those things, uh, the program assistance uh, monthly, and then those are reported out in our quarterly reports to the executive board um, that oversees 
uh, Tanana Chiefs Conference. Um, uh, we are always, uh, we have a policy procedure and then we've uh, created sort of a, a, a little booklet for our consumers that's sort of a condensed version of that policy and procedure, but obviously it's, it's there for them to see at any time. Um, but we're constantly changing that and something we do need to do is update our policy and procedure. And uh, I know that my uh, peers here in Alaska um, have some really good uh, policy and procedures. Um, Sarah, Gwen, uh, Teresa, Gale, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's always a work in progress to adding, adding things, tweaking um, things to make them look uh, better or more understandable. So great. Thank and you. we have a logic model that I have posted at, at all of our desks. Mm -hmm. uh, That, that's awesome, Amanda, uh, especially with the logic model. Um, and for those of you who don't know, a logic model really just um, helps you define the steps of how you're going to achieve your goals and objectives with anticipated outcomes. Um, so it helps you align that strategically. Um, thank you very much, Amanda, for sharing that. I, I don't know if anyone else wanted to chime you're in. You're welcome. Share. So Jacqueline, I, I just wanted to share with you that I think what you're hearing from um, the comments that were made are, you know, basically some activities that we can incorporate um, that would help uh, contribute to recognizing some of the achievements as a, as a team, as, as individuals, um, looking at consumers. Um, there are also some things I think Amanda shared about, you know, some regular activities that are done among, with, among and with the staff to, to increase communication and awareness about services. Um, so those are a few that we would also recommend as Habertac. The other thing that I would recommend um, to you is um, at the end of, I believe, uh, this presentation, we have our contact information um, that you uh, contact us, one of us, and, and we can do actual technical assistance with you, um, where you, we do phone calls back and forth, and if there are specific things you would like some assistance with, we can do that. Um, the other part is, you know, understanding sometimes there are things that are uncontrollable um, in, in the sense that, you know, we can't make the large impact right away, but, um, you know, have a discussion with your manager there um, when she returns and, and talk about, you know, TA with Avertech and the possibility of us working with you moving forward. We are in our last year of our grant um, and we're hoping that another uh, five years will be opened up. Uh, we don't know that, but we are currently recruiting. So um, please, please make an attempt to respond to us, uh, Jacqueline. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, any other comments uh, from anyone out there that you know, you'd like to share in terms of what, are, what do you do to move forward to develop that team cohesion and awareness to improve your ABER services. Any other thoughts? We'd love to hear from all of you, if possible. Debbie, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> I'm sorry, tell me the question. I'm multitasking too. I've got several things going on. What, what, what am I supposed to answer? I think one of the things that I see with your staff, Debbie, is that they're always happy and they're always smiling and laughing. And yeah, that's ex that's exactly correct. I mean, and we're a pretty tight unit. Um, and well, my previous boss, which we've kind of got realigned and moved around now, but um, just his style of leadership and, and supervision was that he wanted kind of a family unit. We're, we're a family here at work. so. That's really helped, and I th and I think that's the reason why I've sustained the staff that I have, um, is because we kind of think of each other's family and we lean on each other. And you know, here we are, the work family, and they're always happy and you know, smiling, and and they kid and joke a lot. And I think yeah. that helps them get through all the difficult you know moments we experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Debbie. Mm hmm. Anyone else?
Okay, so um, if there's not anyone else that wants to contribute, we're uh, gonna move forward with the presentation. Um, we have, let's see if I can do it. The next one here. Moving forward. Um, we did all those, we're on the save the date. So uh, a couple more things we have uh, for you. Thank you for joining us again today. We do have the Ori Averse Orientation Checklist for new staff. Um, this tool is currently available on our resource um, web, web page. Uh, the Lee and Wayne and Suzanne will be presenting that on August 20th, uh, same time. Uh, we also have a talking circle, which uh, will bring all of you together to discuss um, this presentation and also our orientation checklist to see if you've developed um, or utilized the tools that we're sharing. So please save the date for that as well. Um, and then Asquali, Kwai, thank you. You say? Ahehe. Thank you for coming. Um, lastly, we're going to copy this web link into, oops. All right. This web link into the chat box, if you can click on that um, and complete our survey. We also want to give a special thanks to um, our Avertac contact expert, Paula Sinez, for providing the template for this PowerPoint. Um, and then it, here's our contact information for you. If you have any questions, uh, we can be reached at our email address. Please visit our website. Um, and thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. I wanted to lastly say that I'm excited to see what you guys develop. And if you want to share it with us, um, I'm, I would love to look at what you've come up with. And if you want to have share it with us to see if there's, you know, as a, an outside eye to edit it or to um, maybe help you with the PowerPoint slide, I'm always available. The other VR specialists are also available. So yeah, so send it to us. I'm excited to see what you, what you have, um, out there, okay? Okay. Please um, complete the survey. Um, putting it in chat right now. And good luck to you guys working on your grant proposals. I know it's probably a very stressful time. So hang in there, it's almost done. See the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Scream. <laughs> yeah, they should, they should have some emojis, huh? Yeah, we got to find that for the next presentation. Mm -hmm. Just yes. think next week, this time, you will, you'll be done with I'll your be on vacation. All right. Where my, mom, my mom arrived early and I didn't have my stuff done in time. So she's sitting at home waiting for me to come get her at lunch. Oh, where are you going to go to vacation? Probably just staycation or go to China Hot Springs. Oh, nice. Mm. Start to uh, soak in the hot springs. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like been 80 degrees every day since she got here, but now the smoke rolled back in today from a forest fire. Uh. Well, I hope all of you are able to submit it by this Friday because, um, you know, you, you just don't know what's going to happen on Monday. Computers can crash, internet <laughs> fail. Stop talking. But it's due Monday. Uh, so I mean, worst case scenario, it gets submitted Saturday or Sunday. If if I if they close down grants.gov for like I don't know updates or something, I'm really gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah that's why get it get it in early. Okay, guys. Thanks. Okay, Take thank care. you everyone. Okay. Are we going to have a deep read? Okay. Yes, we should. Okay. Let's wait. Uh, will you, you will send out a new one, Gerald? Yes. A couple years. Did you update?